Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. Today we're taking a look at the Dominique Cosmetics Berries and Cream Palette. Several of you have requested that I do a review on this palette or if anything, a get ready with me. It's gonna be a review and demo as I am teaching today will be on my way out. And with that said, I apologize if this won't be an extensive review or demo in that I'm not doing more than one eye look. We'll get into swatches, the demo of course, and my thoughts on the palette. And if you wanna get into that, then please keep on watching. Hi friends, if it's your first time I'm here. My name is Alicia and welcome to Kinky Sweat, a platform where I share all things movement and beauty. Most of my movement adventures are on Instagram and I'm looking to put more movement tutorials here on YouTube. I know I always say that, I'm working on it. Berries and cream. I actually got this during uh, Black Friday in November. I probably should have waited until Sephora got it so I could get 20% off of it. This took a little bit of time to arrive i believe i'm looking like a week and a half i'm not sure if it's because it was back ordered or i i wasn't i don't remember the situation but i remember it took a while to get to my house i was very happy when it finally did this palette retails 44 dollars i believe i got this from the dominique cosmetics website they do have an afterpay program where you could do four payments of 11 dollars why not? The shipping on this, ah. Well, I actually did the free shipping because for Dominique Cosmetics, it's free at standard shipping in the US for orders over $40. So this qualifies as an item you could get free shipping for just from the individual cost alone. I actually, oh, I forgot, hold on. Oh, things are falling. I have the original latte palette here next to me also, just so you can compare size because Berries and Cream is significantly bigger than the original latte palette. I don't have lemonade because I wasn't impressed by the swatches and I understand swatches don't mean a thing. It's all about how well the shadows apply on your eye. I just felt across the board the feedback has been not super favorable for lemonade versus the latte palette, which I actually really like. And I love berries and cream, so I'm gonna get into this soon. Here is the sleeve that the palette comes in. I love the color, it's like a textured metallic finish and here is the palette itself it's plastic but it looks like velvet so that's a really nice texture print they have on the palette behind here you just have all the info which says 12 month expiration shelf life this is a cruelty free product 12 shadows in here and they go for 1.4 gram net weight each here are the shadows very different uh shadow pan design from the original latte palette if i quickly open that one up oh god making noise the latte palette has circular pans and these are one two three four wait octagons eight sides one two three four five six seven eight yes i hope that's right i was terrible at geometry well all types of tree when it came to math here are the palettes side by side i mean berries and cream is huge the pans i think are bigger in the latte palette yes you get 1.8 grams of product in each of the pans in the latte palette and a little less in berries and cream but you get more shades in berries and cream you're getting 10 shadows in latte and you're getting 12 in berries and cream now from the color scheme alone the latte palette is a lot more neutral friendly whereas berries and cream you're getting into the purples the taupes but you still have uh, a lot of warm shades here but this is why i really love this palette you can get a really beautiful daily look using the purples and that might be hard to believe just upon first glance if you see the hue of them you're like "Ooh, i don't know if that's gonna be daily friendly for me because of this shade soft and sweet this shade kind of finesses the purples in a way that makes it very daily friendly it creates a beautiful smoky eye without looking too outrageously out there purple and that's the look i'll do for you today i'll primarily use the purple so you can see how daily friendly it actually turns out and then i'll tell you about the shade that i don't like Timestamps will be down below. As you know, I always have the timestamps in my description box. Sometimes I don't put them in the comments because I forget, but just know there are always in the description box. Okay, let's get into the swatches, shall we? I'm on her website because uh, they kindly break down shade descriptions for each color, which I appreciate because I don't like trying to figure out the shade descriptions on my own. Okay, first up is Warm Pie, and that's a matte red brown with gold glitter. Chocolate Mousse is a rich matte brown. Sweet Cream is a matte pale pink. 
Toasted is a matte gray. Bittersweet is a matte fuchsia. Soft and sweet is a matte mauve taupe. One of my favorite shades in the palette, hands down. Honey Dipped is a gold foil. So pretty, love this shade. Sugar Cookie is a pale pink shimmer. Cranberry is a maroon red shimmer. Blueberry Muffin is a matte cobalt blue. And last we have Blackberry, which is just your black matte. Here are all the shades from Berries and Cream, and overall, I love the color scheme. I really do. I feel you could create several looks from this palette, ranging from neutral to maroon to purple to taupey to smoky. Even the blue can add a little bit to the mix, but I will say now that the blue is my least favorite shadow out of the palette. And if I had to get down into the review now, my feedback for the palette from using it as much as I did, I wish Blueberry muffin was a foil instead of a matte. I get how beautiful matte blues can be. This one in particular is was very tough to work with. I tried to do an all over matte look using the blue but the thing is I find you have to use a cream shadow first as your base. If you just rely on your concealer the blue shadow will separate and you'll start to see the skin peeking through throughout the day and that's what happened to me. The blue was there but the minute I closed my eyes you just saw the strip of skin started to peek through and that was really unfortunate because this is a beautiful shade but you have so many mattes in here you have honey dip which is the one foil you have sugar cookie and cranberry which just those two shimmers out of all 12 i felt i could have gotten more use better performance if this was a metallic shade typically i find the metallic shades are a lot smoother sometimes i guess depending on the brand sometimes are smoother than the matte because it's a matte blue i found myself only really using it as an all over blue look, meaning lid, crease, and lash line, just making the look blue, which I loved. And I'm so stupid because that day, from the very beginning, that morning, I was like, take a picture, take a picture, take, and I just forgot. I forgot. I feel again, I can only do the all blue look or maybe just do it in the crease and use other shades in here for the rest of the eye look. If I just do it on my lower lash line, it just becomes so dark and it just looks out of place for me. But if it was a metallic blue, I felt it could have added really nice punch and shine and actually will still look blue. Because when I try to just apply blueberry muffin as like a lower lash line accent, it kind of looked black or it kind of looked blue. I feel you will have to pair this with a vibrant eyeliner that's blue of course so it could look more blue just with the shadow on the lower lash line but I feel if it was metallic it would have been a really nice accent and it will look distinctively blue on its own without any assistance from a liner whatever you want to use it with my other critique is that sugar cookie is really pretty that's the uh, pale pink shimmer but it's probably not like a favorite shade to use for your inner corner or brow bone if you're my complexion or deeper if you're deeper than me you could use honey dipped as your accent highlighter shade for the eyes but like sometimes I don't want to use a pink shimmer for my accent shade on my inner corner or brow bone so in that instance I would just dip out and use the highlighter shade I used on my face for inner corner and brow bone sweet cream I found myself using very little of it's very opaque which is great but I feel it, it could look a little dusty on my skin. Maybe this could have been like the paler champagne gold shade and you could have kept sugar cookie and make this the blue metallic shade. That's what I would have done. Overall though, I, I see what she was trying to do here. Like the whole uh, color story concept I think is great. Berries and cream, like with that in mind, the colors that come into play for that concept. But those are the changes I would make. In terms of longevity, I feel these shadows last well throughout the day they lasted well over seven hours on me the matte still looked vibrant at the end of the day they didn't look washed out or started to fade except for of course blueberry muffin that was the shade that started to fade and that I was disappointed in all the other shades though especially when you really build them up on the lids initially they last well throughout the day honey dip has great staying power especially if you apply the sweat as well as cranberry I didn't really use sugar cookie extensively on my lids I really only use sugar cookie on my inner corner my brow bone highlight but that lasted well my favorite colors out of the palette are toasted and soft and sweet because these colors set up your eye very well if you wanted to go more warm or you wanted to go more taupey gray and although this is said to be a gray 
it's a gray that's on the warmer side of the spectrum which i appreciate because it doesn't look so muddy and dusty on the lids it actually has a really nice color richness to it that i feel pairs beautifully well with the other browns and purples in this palette so that is my take on the palette from using it and of course my feedback on it we did the swatches you know what time it is All right, on the lid, I have the new NYX, well, I don't know if it's new anymore because I totally lost track of when this released. The uh, new NYX Cosmetics Can't Stop, Won't Stop Concealer in the shade beige on my lid. I still think this is a little too yellow for me. I put it under my eyes as well. I love it as an eyeshadow uh, base because of the soft matte finish it dries down to and i think it's nice grab for shadows i don't know if i like the color though i feel like i need a lighter color but this looks so good on its own it's a little all of the two i feel like on me see how it's pulling very yellow on my lids in comparison to the rest of my face oh dear whatever we'll work on that another day the new fenty uh, concealer is launching tomorrow. I'm gonna make sure I am nearby a Sephora tomorrow. Get my hands on that. Maybe film and I would try to get that video up as fast as I can because I know we all want to know. I'm gonna go in first with Soft and Sweet. Are absolutely going in with our Wayne Goss. But today we'll use our number three. Let's get into it. Oh, and of course forgot to mention huge mirror very helpful i feel like i should have used another concealer because i don't want the can't stop won't stop to ruin the shade for soft and sweet i think we're gonna be okay but next time i'll use another shade soft and sweet amazing shade again this is uh what's described to be like a taupe mauve it actually pulls very not super warm that it looks orange on me but it doesn't look great either which i appreciate and i find that these eyeshadows blend exceptionally well i was actually quite surprised with the overall blending performance i'm going in like four or five times because i want to build up this transition shade for our purple look oh i also use this palette for the uh beautylish and chikohoto brush review set i i demoed the shadows i don't remember so maybe i'll do something else oh you know what i messed up you already saw soft and sweet on that demo let me do another color what am i doing oh but see this is not all to waste because you didn't see me apply soft and sweet on that video because i already started it with it on going in with my born this way in oh man you're not focusing on me yeah i definitely have to use this shade instead the, the can't stop won't stop is getting real it's getting real yellow on these lids man let's start from the beginning yes much better of a shade for my lids and i also think the concealer just a better shade for me because it looks weirdly yellow on my brow bone arch in person you can't pick it up on camera maybe you can let's do toasted same way number three make sure we clean that i am using my microfiber towel i always have this on standby for color switching you could also use a color switch but i just like towels here we go i'm happy that i caught myself because i want you to see how toasted looks on my skin tone because initially when you see it in the pan questions arise such as is that going to look super gray is that going to look muddy because depending on your skin tone different tones of shadows will show up in different ways but i really appreciate the tone of this gray because see how although it's gray it's almost like a cool lavender gray it has like a nice a uh, purple undertone to it that i feel it's just it's just a nice transition shade to have in this palette and this shade as well like soft and sweet blends beautifully well it's very easy to apply especially with my wang go off i like how it glides across the lids and this shade in particular doesn't have crazy fallout in the pan or i should say kickback neither does soft and sweet it does a little bit across the board these shadows are a little more powdery than let's say the makeup forever singles i love this shade i think it's gorgeous it's gray but it's just a nice color to have 
if you don't want to go super warm with your look again i'm building this up a lot i'm pulling it out right from the get-go i know you already saw bittersweet in action but i'm actually going to go in with that today and then use chocolate mousse 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 as the defining shade instead of cherry juice because we saw cherry juice juice What's with the zhuzh today on the Chikohoro video? So this is my Sonia G Worker Pro going in with Bittersweet on the outer corner of the lid. I'm taking it across inner third as well, placing that down. See how beautiful uh, Toasted looks with Bittersweet? Because again, Toasted is not just gray. It has like a a lavender tint to it that I feel just pairs beautifully with the purples. This is too dark now. I'm, I'm always adjusting as the light adjusts because it's just always changing in here. And I really love Bittersweet uh, as an eyeshadow. I think it performs really well. It is a little powdery in the pan, but not by much. N not anything that's, I feel, overly powdery that you can't handle. And I love the shade. I think the shade is gorgeous. And we have not gotten any fallout so far have my big fluffy brush on standby so we always need to refine i'm actually taking my number three with bittersweet the fuchsia shade and i'm just running that across the crease just so that we could get that to look a little smoother i'm taking toasted but more towards the top. I don't know what's going on here today. Some days it looks nice and other days is mm. Now with my Beautylish and Chico Hodo uh, shader brush, or sh sh eyeshadow brush, eye brush. I'm going in with chocolate mousse. See how that goes. Placing that just to the outer V first. Looking pretty good so far. Winging it out slightly, working it into the crease. I think I'm also placing chocolate mousse, same brush, to the inner third. While we're here with the brush, bittersweet, that fuchsia shade, lower lash line. Taking that again, same brush, but chocolate mousse, outer third. Oh, we got a little crazy on this side. We got a little crazy. Taking my Sonia Blender Pro, just to help kind of refine this a little bit so it doesn't look so crazy. Taking this with Toasted, the matte shade. We're in that across the lash line. How we're looking so far, friends. I really love how this is turning out. But again, you see we use purple, but because of chocolate mousse and the Toasted shade, it, it grounded it a little bit so it doesn't look so crazy purple. And I think still daily friendly appropriate, don't you think? And if anything, if you wanted to add more smoke, you have a... Uh, the black matte to make that happen with. Now we'll go in with cranberries. This is the other shimmer shade. This is my Zoeva 234. I'm definitely gonna wet it because it comes out a lot better when wet. Center of the lid. Cranberry is really pretty. It almost looks a little like magenta. Like there's a little bit of pink in the in the shade, I feel like. I also want to do a declutter video. I think that's that's my next project. I'm gonna set up the camera and shamefully expose all that I've accumulated in 2017. I'm sorry, 2018, hello. Isn't that pretty? I love cranberry. Again, because it's not super red, it's a little bit like when it's applied wet, it looks a little pink, don't you think? Now with Honey Dipped with the same brush, definitely wet it again, but at the tip because I'm applying this inner corner, not so much the actual inner corner, but like the inner third, I should say, of my lower lash line. Ooh, I loaded the brush way too much. I got plenty of fallout, plenty. That was my fault, my bad. This shade is a little crumbly. I, I have to say Honey Dip is a little textured, so do make sure whether it's on your lid or your lash line that you kind of kick off the excess before you apply that shade on your eyes. Yep, got it all over my contacts, great. Well, this is more successful because I kicked off the excess. Works wonders. Oh my God, there's like a line of concealer right under my brow bone that looks so yellow. Ugh. Now with the Sonia Pencil Pro going in with Sugar Cookie. See how that looks. Definitely wetting this shade. And so you can see how it looks, putting that on the inner corner. So it's pretty, but sometimes I don't want to go pink, you know, for my highlight 
accent shade. It's very bright and very shiny. Ooh, definitely went overboard. Oh God. I'm taking Honey Dip with that pencil brush, combining it with sugar cookie. Maybe that's something we can do to cut down on the pink and add a little more gold to the mix. Hmm? Kicking off the extra sparkle that fell on my nose. Let's just for kick see, what is this called? Sweet cream. I'm using sweet cream to kind of clean up this a little bit, but I feel it's so pale pink that it doesn't finesse the matte. It just kind of, see how that went over it? So it changed the color altogether, which I'm not a huge fan of. So I definitely don't like, I don't like sweet cream, not for my skin tone anyway. Like I wouldn't find any use for it. If I were to do an all matte look, I could use that instead of sugar cookie if I wanted a matte highlight for my brow bone or my inner corner, but huh, I really do matte looks like that, so I don't know, man. All right, friends, let's apply some mascara and I'll be right back. Look is complete along with mascara applied some lips. Today's lip combo is the Makeup Forever Artist Color Pencil in Versatile Chestnut with Dior's Rouge Liquid Lip 614 in Jungle Matte. And here are the eyes, friends. You wanna take a closer look? Here's the mascara on, here are how the lids look. What do we think? Do you like the color scheme? Do you like how the toasted gray matte kind of finessed the other shades to look more cooler in tone? I really like this palette. I used it extensively. I love the colors in here. I love how you could go more cool, more warm, but even the cool looks gorgeous. Like I love the tone of toasted this is probably i said this is my favorite matte i think this is my favorite matte because it was my unexpected love right i didn't expect it to love it as much as i did because i just appreciate the tone it kind of gives the other shadows love cranberry again it definitely looks a little more like pinkish in tone than just exclusively red honey dipped is a gorgeous shade i had that on my lid in the uh, chikohoro video i love cherry juice as an intensifying shade as well as chocolate mousse cherry juice maybe has a little more punch than chocolate mousse but both are really great sugar cookie is really pretty it adds really nice accent and brightness to the inner corner sometimes i don't want to go this color route when it comes to my inner corners but that's just me but the shine though the brightness is outstanding and warm pie despite Despite it having glitter flecks in the formula, Warm Pie is a gorgeous shade. It's a little drier in texture because of the glitter flecks. Flex. But once you start blending this out, the glitter flecks kind of disperse and go away and they don't disrupt the blend either. They just kind of do its thing and as you blend, they'll flick off and they'll be fine. This is a gorgeous hue and one day I used Warm Pie with Chocolate Mousse. Really beautiful, like deep, red warm smoky eye that I created. I get that there always has to be like a light matte of some sort. The hue is just so pinky and opaque and white. You know, like, I don't know what I'm gonna do with that. I if this was warmer, like a warmer light pink, I felt like I could have really finessed it and made it happen. Eh, but it's not, it's like white, which maybe would work if you were placing this all over the lid or maybe if you were doing a cut crease situation and you want it i don't know let's just say blueberry muffin on the crease you cut it out and then you place the sweet cream so it's like nice opaque white on the lid i feel that shade is just not flattering to me so that's why I even you could do several things with that shade you can make it happen but because i primarily do smoky types of eyes halo eyes i don't i have little use for sweet cream so those are my least favorite shades sweet cream and blueberry muffin are like my two least favorite shades in the palette everything else i can get down with but for 44 dollars and the amount of product you get i think it's a great buy i like this a lot better than Naked Cherry. And I feel bad about returning product. I know we've had this conversation. Sephora sets it up that is very easy to return and the return policy is there on purpose. If you're not satisfied with the product, I got it on a whim during one of the VIB Rouge sale weekends. And even though it swatched really nicely and I love the color story, I feel you can only get one type of eye look from that palette. It's like there's so many mattes and they all turn out looking the same. I feel you could finagle more looks out of this a little more because of the two transition shades that could veer more warm or cool just from that alone you just have a lot more outcome using berries and cream than i feel like you do with naked cherry and isn't naked cherry like in the 40s or the 50s 
You see what I mean? It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense to spend to have spent so much money on one palette for just one look primarily. So I am gonna take it back, I believe. I think I'm within like my 90 day uh, window that I could return items in. Sorry, Naked Cherry. <laughs> if you were by chance maybe comparing Naked Cherry to Berries and Cream, I would get Berries and Cream instead. I know it's a bigger palette, maybe not as travel friendly because I mean, unless you have a really big makeup bag that you travel with, that's the only way this is gonna fit. Yeah, I would definitely get Berries and Cream over Naked Cherry if you were by chance making a comparison between the two. I really enjoy this a lot more. I think the performance is better. I think the shadows blend better. The pigmentation is better. And the overall color story is just more extensive and for me, a lot more exciting than Naked Cherry. So that's it, my friends. Let me know if you picked up Berries and Cream, if you're thinking about it, if you do have it, what were your pros and cons about it and your feedback about the palette and we'll take it from there and that my friends is a wrap thank you all so much for watching i hope this video helped and if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and until then i'll see you on here again with another tutorial chit chat demo or review take care and i'll see you again soon